What's up guys, it's Rhett. Just wanna do a quick video today to show you how to withdraw your money from Coinbase. So I've got my iPhone here, and we're just gonna go through steps here on mobile, but all these same steps should apply if you're on Android or if you're trying to do this on your desktop computer. So let's swipe over and open up the Coinbase app. And so it'll open up, we'll be on the main screen, and all we're gonna do here is click on these three dots that say more, and then down at the bottom, we're going to click on cash out. And so once you're here on this cash out screen, you're gonna see the linked bank accounts here. If we click on that, we can see that I have a linked checking account at Charles Schwab, a savings account at Capital One, and then if I wanted to, I could add a debit card and transfer my US dollar funds out of Coinbase to that debit card. We can see here up at the top though that I have zero dollars available to cash out. And if we go back to the main screen and we click on assets down at the bottom, we'll see that I have zero dollars to cash out because all of the money is in cryptocurrency right now. So I have eight dollars in Bitcoin and about four dollars in Ethereum. And so if I want to process a cash out to my bank account, I can't withdraw the cryptocurrency straight from Coinbase into my bank account. I first have to sell the cryptocurrency to withdraw the US dollars to my bank account. So let's go ahead and click on Ethereum and we'll click on trade and we'll sell our Ethereum. We'll click on max to sell all of our Ethereum. We'll see here we're getting quoted the current price for Ethereum. We're cashing out to our USD wallet, which is what we wanted. And then we're getting this Coinbase fee, which is about a dollar, which if you were processing a much larger sale, wouldn't be as big of a deal, but I'm only selling $3 of Ethereum. So I'm paying like 30% in fees, which is pretty crazy. And so if you do wanna learn how to lower this Coinbase fee, definitely check out the videos that I'll have linked up in the cards. But for now, let's go ahead and sell all of the Ethereum that we had. And we should be getting $2.75 of US dollars. So now if we view our account, taking its time to load here. But finally here when it loads, we'll see that now we have zero dollars of Ethereum. And if we click back on assets, we can see that now we do in fact have $2.75 of US dollars. And so now conveniently we have the cash out button just immediately available right here when we clicked on our US dollar balance. So let's go ahead and click on cash out. And let's go ahead and cash out to our linked Charles Schwab checking account. And we'll go ahead and click on max. And then we'll preview cash out. So the most notable thing about this cash out screen is we'll see that the cash out fee is $0. So the only fee that we paid during this whole process was for selling our cryptocurrency into cash. And when you do sell your cryptocurrency into cash, that is also a taxable event. So you should keep track of your cost basis. But back to this cash out, you'll see that when we withdraw $2.75 from Coinbase, we're going to be receiving $2.75 here at the bottom in our Charles Schwab checking accounts. So let's go ahead and click on cash out now. And here we're getting the message that our cash is on its way and Coinbase is going to notify us when the cash out is completed. So now if we go back to view the account, we'll see that now again, we have $0 in our Coinbase balance and we can see that we withdrew the funds to our Charles Schwab checking account. The status is completed. And so now when we head over to our Charles Schwab account, we should be seeing that there is some incoming transfer. And because these bank transfers are kind of slow, you might not see the bank transfer right away. It might take one to three days like was quoted earlier on in the process. And that's just because traditional bank accounts are kind of slow. So if you're having any trouble with this process, I think the most likely place that you would get stuck is let's say that you had added cash from your bank account into your Coinbase app. Let's say you deposited $100 from your linked checking account and we'll pretend that our Coinbase balance here is now $100. Coinbase would instantly credit you the $100, but the $100 hasn't actually moved from your checking account into Coinbase, physically settled over in Coinbase's accounts. And so they're probably not going to let you withdraw that $100 until that cash physically settles in their accounts, which could take up to seven days. And so if you are getting anything that says like, you don't have a large enough active USD balance or something to withdraw, just wait a few days and then you should be able to withdraw the cash from Coinbase back to your linked bank account. So now that we understand how to withdraw US dollars from our Coinbase account back to our linked checking or savings account, next let's talk about how to withdraw cryptocurrency from Coinbase. So if we come back to the home screen here, we can go ahead and click on the send button up in the top in the middle, just under our balance. And in this case, we wanna send our Bitcoin so let's go ahead and scan a QR code and I'm just gonna scan the QR code for my wallet over on my iPad and then I'm gonna click on continue. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click on max so that we can send all of the Bitcoin that's in our Coinbase over to the blue wallet that's on our iPad. And you'll see notably here that we're trying to send $8.37 of Bitcoin but we're only getting to send $7.84 of Bitcoin and that's because of this Bitcoin miner network fee that is associated with every Bitcoin transaction. So this is not the Coinbase fee that we saw earlier for selling. This isn't Coinbase trying to screw you out of money. This is how the Bitcoin network works. There are network fees for sending any transaction. So let's go ahead and click on okay. 
and we'll click on send now. I've set up two-factor authentication on any withdraw, so I'm going to go ahead and enter my authenticator code for Coinbase. So I've entered that code and now we'll see that it has successfully sent. And I don't know if you can really see this, but this is the iPad wallet and it looks like the glare is too bad. So I'll just show a screen print, but basically it's saying pending the $7.83 that I just sent from the iPhone. And the ETA for that is about 10 minutes. And that's just because it takes Bitcoin transactions about 10 minutes on average to settle from one wallet to another wallet. And so once that Bitcoin has fully settled in my iPad wallet, I'll throw up a screenshot here of what that's gonna look like. And if we come back here to Coinbase and refresh our balance, we'll see this number, your balance hasn't updated yet. But then if you look down at the Bitcoin dollar figure that I hold here, it is showing zero dollars and zero cents because I did just send that Bitcoin over to my iPad. And you can see the history of that transaction here over on sent Bitcoin. So I've seen a lot of these how to withdraw from Coinbase tutorials here on YouTube. And a lot of them just show you how to withdraw US dollars from your Coinbase account. And so here at the end of the video, for anyone that's new to crypto or who's a beginner and doesn't really understand why you would ever want to send your crypto out of Coinbase and onto a wallet that you control, let's say on your iPad, there's a famous phrase that we say in the Bitcoin and crypto community called not your keys, not your coins. And it basically means that if you don't own the private keys to your Bitcoin, it's not really your Bitcoin, it's someone else's Bitcoin that they're holding for you. So if you wanna be 100% sure that no one's doing anything fishy with your Bitcoin, you can hold some or all of it yourself on a mobile device like this iPad, or maybe on your laptop or your desktop computer, or for even more security, if you're trying to custody large amounts, you can store your Bitcoin on this USB thumb drive looking thing, which is called a hardware wallet. Or if you wanted to be super secure with your Bitcoin, you could protect it using multiple keys. You could use one key as this Ledger Nano S plus that we just talked about. And then you could use a second key as this cold card Mark IV from CoinKite. And then maybe the third key could be this wallet that we just sent funds to on our iPad. And so when we protect our Bitcoin with three keys like that, we could set up a system where you need two of these three devices to ever sign a transaction. Ultimately, your Bitcoin is yours to custody. And if I just sent you over the top with anxiety and you're like, I don't wanna have to custody my things with three different devices, Rhett, shut the f up. That's totally okay. Everyone starts somewhere. The important part is that you get off zero and you start self custodying at least some percentage of the cryptocurrency that you hold. So you can better understand exactly how it works and understand the differences between holding crypto yourself on one of the devices that I just showed you and holding your crypto on an exchange like Coinbase. Because again, if you have all your crypto on an exchange, it's not really your crypto. In this case, it's Coinbase's crypto and they're just holding it for you. The same kind of relationship that you might have with a bank, except the difference between Coinbase and a bank is that obviously your bank account is FDIC insured and Coinbase doesn't have any kind of insurance like that. And the government can't just go print more Bitcoin if Coinbase happens to lose your Bitcoin. And as we've come to find out in the case of FTX, the Bitcoin that people people were purchasing wasn't even held on the exchange there for them. Instead, it was allegedly being invested into highly illiquid and highly risky venture capital style investments and being siphoned off into various different political campaigns. So once again, not your keys, not your coins. There are a whole host of reasons that Coinbase is fundamentally different than FTX. And so if you are new to the space and you want a comprehensive list of what those differences are and you want to better understand how safe Coinbase is going forward, go down below and leave a comment if you are interested in me making a video on that topic. And if you guys do have any other questions about anything we covered in this video or any other cryptocurrency related question that you have, definitely go down below and leave a comment. I do still respond to all the comments. Share this video with your friends if you found it helpful and check out this video over here if you want to learn more about Bitcoin self-custody and check out this video over here if you want to learn how to automatically withdraw all your funds from Coinbase every single week. That's it for today, guys. I love you all. Goodbye.